You know, you have a comparable situation here, Harry. The Notre Dame seniors haven't beaten DePaul for about three years. Notre Dame has won four in a row here against Marquette, so you know that some of these seniors, Downing and Trotter, the others, they're, they're looking for a big one. Half is controlled by Notre Dame. The Irish with the ball in the forward court. It's in the hands of playmaker David Rivers. David Rivers with Kevin Johnson on him. Captain over Downing, off the crowd of the rim, won't go, and Johnson snares the rebound for Marquette. Marquette started in a man-to-man, -man and Johnson was matched up against Rivers. Notre Dame in their man. The jumper by Benny Moore goes, and Marquette takes an early 2-0 lead from Benny Moore. Big plus, Harry, a streak shooter, same as Joseph Price. Kevin Johnson trying to stay right on David Rivers' numbers. Royal almost lost it, does lose it. It's stripped by Boone. David Boone from Marquette gets it into the hands of Kevin Johnson. Harry Trotter inside, stolen by Kempton to David Rivers. Rivers right between two Marquette Warriors, and a foul is going to be called, and it's going to be on Boone. David Boone picking up his first. I asked Rick McGarris, Harry, what the two strengths were of Marquette. He said one, our defense. They stopped Notre Dame the first time. They'll probably stay right in it. Until Notre Dame forces them out of it, they'll stay in that band. Stevenson, the jumper, yes, by Mark Stevenson. We're tied at two. 18.49 to play here in the first half. You know, it is remarkable for a freshman, isn't it, how many opening baskets Mark Stevenson has hit in big games. Syracuse in a close one at the Carrier Dome over St. John 68-64. And upset Virginia Tech upsetting number two ranked Memphis State by four. Kevin Johnson. Harry Potter inside, Walter Downing. Turnaround jumper by Downing makes it 4 to Marquette. Boy, there's another big plus for them because they haven't been getting much offense out of him. If he can complement the offense with the defense, that's going to be a big plus. And Milo baseline right by Trotter, and Milo has two, and we're tied at four. Watch how far away from Kempton when Notre Dame is on offense. Downing is playing because he's a great, great shot blocker, so he's ready to get the ball, and then he's going to try to block. Downing turnaround jumper doesn't get the roll, and the rebound pulled down by Mark Stevenson. David Rivers. Well, that's a good call. He turned it over. Carrying the ball called on David Rivers. It'll be Marquette's ball. See what happened, Harry, is he was just about to make an entry pass, and somebody took the, the, the lane away from him. He couldn't make the pass, and then he turned it. Rick Majerus in his third year as head coach of the Marquette Warriors. Following Al McGuire and Hank Raymond. Get the long-time assistant of Marquette. We're tied at four in the early going. Well, with the matchup we thought, Harry, Donald Royal is matched up against David Boone. There, Boone got inside of him. Got inside position, and he was hacked by Donald Royal. Yeah, let's take a look now because Donald Royal always gets the assignment of the best, the best offensive play. Now, see, he just, they had a mix-up defensively. Boone beat him to the inside, and Royal tried to get there and, and foul in the process. Boone's the leading scorer for Marquette. He had to be 14-18 points for him, a 75% free throw shooter. Six, 215 pounds, junior college, college transfer from St. Mary's College in San Francisco. Marquette leading by two and a thunder dunk by Donald Royal. We're tied at six, 17 and a half minutes left to play first half. Benny Moore penetrates, doesn't go, rebound to Tim Kempton, who has played well in the last few games for Notre Dame. David Rivers, Kevin Johnson right on him. Foul's going to be called on Terry Trotter. His first, the team's second. Notre Dame will inbound. 
Peter Phelps in his 15th year as head coach of the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame has taken nine of his 14 teams, the NCAA tournaments, looking for number 10 this year. Near steal by Kevin Johnson. David Rivers is fouled by Kenny Moore. His first, the Warriors' third team foul. It's, it's defense. They have very, very good quickness defensively, Harry, and they have very quick hands. Now, the Marquette people are unhappy because they thought there's been a couple of travel calls on Notre Dame that haven't been made. Tied at six, 17 minutes left to play. David Rivers from far outside. Nope. Rebound, Stevenson back up. Yes, by the freshman Mark Stevenson, the Irish by two. He went into a zone on both out-of-bounds plays, and there was nobody blocking out Stevenson. He stood right under there when the ball came down. Wide open is Kevin Johnson, and K.J. knocks one down. And we're tied again at eight. Kevin Johnson and the man for man guarding David Rivers. They had a Johnson last year as a great defender. Man oh, boy, Johnson. they sure Johnson. did. And look at David Boone is also playing against Royal on the other end. Captain the move to the basket, and Captain is going to be called for the foul. And it'll go on Tim Kempton, his first, the team's second. Just a little bit too far out on the floor, Harry, for I think Tim to be playing one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure uh, Digger would feel the same way about it. He can face that basket and take that jumper, but he's got to be careful when he puts it on the floor where he is. Kevin Johnson with his hands on the ball. Kevin Johnson causes one up there. The basket, I believe, will go, and he was fouled. Good movement by the junior college transfer, Kevin Johnson. They are playing pretty well offensively, Harry. I thought maybe they were going to try to rush too much and get caught up in the excitement in the crowd, but there is pretty good body control right there by Kevin Johnson. And the one thing Marquette is getting is balanced scoring. They call Kevin K.J. He's an Eastern Arizona junior college transfer from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he's got a three-point play, and the Marquette Warriors have a three-point lead and an offensive foul on David Rivers on a fine defensive pick by Benny Moore. Boy, there is a great call. Let me explain it to you. When you have the ball, time and distance are meaningless. You can do that. If he did not have that ball, you cannot jump into the path of an offensive player without giving them a chance to make a move. That was a great call. Marquette leading by three. We have 16 minutes to play first half. The Notre Dame changed their defense now. Benny Moore from outside of the Marquette Warriors lead by five. Stevenson. Skip pass to Kempton is wide open. Doesn't get it. The rebound torn down by Boone. Kevin Johnson. See, that's smart. They said that young man will, will move it, but he plays under control. Terry Trotter is perfect, and Marquette leads by seven. Fifteen and a half minutes to play first half. Did we say something about perimeter shooting? Warriors are shooting well this afternoon. Lead by seven. David Rivers setting things up for Notre Dame. That's doing a nice job on Rivers so far. Well, he is. The shot won't go. Rebound battle for Kerry Trotter. Trotter. Yeah. Ben Johnson and Kevin Johnson will set it up. I'm impressed by Kevin Boy, oh, That is very good. That's exactly what they told me, that the young man does not play out of control. And that's good judgment by a point guard. Marquette has scored nine straight points, hey? 15-8 Warriors. And Barlow doesn't take the shot. Gets it back. Hampton now Stevenson. Stevenson has it flipped away. There's a foul call, and it's going to be on Walter Downing. Downing's first. Jim Dolan is quickly going to check in for Notre Dame. Dolan is 6'8", senior from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Tom Culp is going to check in for Marquette. Now, I told you about the hands. They flipped that ball. Wide. Now, watch. See the great hands? Now, watch the determination. Almost a jump ball, but not. That's okay. You can turn over. Now, Kempton usually takes that jumper, but now watch. This is a foul Downing. There was another almost a steal. Downing should not have. He should have just put his hands up in the air and not even moved his arms. Stevenson has been a fine free throw shooter. Mark 86% from the free throw line. 
He's got that one, and Stevenson leads all scores with five points. He and Kevin Johnson of Marquette each have five. Stevenson with six, Marquette leads by five. Stevenson will check out, Joseph Price will come in. A timeout's been called to the eight percent. Notre Dame is 50% four of eight, so both teams are shooting well and both teams are perfect at the line. Notre Dame has won the last four meetings in this series. Looking at Joyce, the coach of Marquette, 0-3 against Notre Dame. Digger Phelps, 8-7 against Marquette. The Notre Dame has changed the defense. Marquette was playing very well against that man-to-man. -man. Now Digger has gone into his own. Offensive rebound and follow by David Boone. After the miss by Tom Copeland, Marquette leads by seven. No mistake, Harry, that young man is 16th in the nation in rebounding. He gets great to 16. Now, look at Marquette has gone into his own. See, they've got a man guarding Rivers all over. Maybe that box and one. Let's take a look. Nolan to Rivers, and the guy that's been on Rivers has been Kevin Johnson. Yeah. Royal in traffic, in trouble, whistle, flat foul call, and it's going to be called on Kevin Johnson. KJ picking up his first, the team's fifth. So you can tell that they have Darrell Royal scouted pretty well, because if you give a man in position, especially in the ball, I should say, positioning the ball, especially Royal, that they triple teamed him once they pounded that ball inside, Harry. Bigger Phelps, 1-0 in the... Midwest Independent Series. Marquette also won to know, having beaten Dayton. Notre Dame beating DePaul. They're going to stay in the zone, but they did it on every out of bounds so far. See, they're doing a lot of talking. Seeing Copa and, and Boone and Trotter talking to each other as players go through, it's almost like they're matching out of it. Good pass by Rivers to Ken Barlow. Dolan. Will pass up the shot, back out to Price. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 17 seconds. And here's another foul inside. Marquette doubling out of the ball and picking up fouls. Now, this is one of the things we talked about, Harry. I told you, if they call this game close, it's really going to be in Notre Dame's favor. Now, the tempo of the game when Notre Dame is burning time off the clock is in Marquette's favor also because they won't get as tired in a 40-minute game. Barlow to jump shot, will not go, and Terry Trotter owns the board for Marquette. Warriors lead by seven, 13 minutes remaining to be played first half. The Notre Dame is matching. Take away, see Royal, watch Royal when the ball goes down, how they're looking, how Rivers is looking, they're passing them through. Now called inside on Tom Copa. Copa picking up a foul. His first, and that is the team's seventh, The Notre Dame will be shooting one and one for the remaining portion of this half, which numbers 12 minutes and 54 seconds. That's precisely the point I was going to make. That's a long time for a club to be in the one and one Honestly, Harry, where I think Marquette is playing very good defense, but where they've gotten themselves in trouble down on this defensive end, they have people trapped, but they're doing too much reaching at times when I don't think they should be reaching when they've got a player surrounded. That's not the time to do the reach. Notre Dame is in the top 20 in free throw percentage as a team. Ken Barlow is eighth in the nation in free throw percentage. And you see why he's shooting 91% from the free throw line. Final average is 14 7 tenths points per game. Marquette leading by six. Great touch by Barlow, cans them both. Marquette's lead is five, 1252 to play first half. Pressure by Notre Dame. They quickly get back as Boone gets it across the timeline. Penny Moore. Back into the hands of Kevin Johnson, number 10. Moore from outside. Tap by Copa, nicely by Tom Copa. Marquette by seven. Almost basket interference. If it had been on the cylinder on the ring, it would have been, but he waited till it was outside and brought it right back in, which is legal. The bigger wanted to get some more offense in that game, Harry, so that's why he put Joseph Price in, who's got the, uh, the ability to hit from the perimeter. 
Rusty, they're driving rivers, man to man, and they're just doing a lot of zoning on the rest of them. Fox and one of the peers fight from outside. That's why he was inserted in the game. Joseph averages 6.8 per game off the bench. Notre Dame trailing by five. 11.55 to play first half. Kevin Johnson, Benny Moore free for the shot in the south court, drills it from outside. Benny with six points and Mark kept back up by seven. Now they're going to get into it and go right into a man-to-man. -man. See, they're getting out of there. A lot of checkers being played here. A lot of moves being made at both ends. Now they're out of the zone. They're playing man-to-man. Here he throws it away. It'll be Mark Cap ball going the other way. And again, we reiterate that Kevin Johnson, KJ Johnson, and Mark Cap's done a good job on David Rivers. We have 11:21 left to play in the first half. A timeout's been called to score. Mark Cap 21. And one of them was snapping an 81-game home Mark Cap winning streak against Al McGuire's club in January of 1973. Bob Sims is in there now, Michael Sims, at a guard, he wears number 12 for Marquette. That's the young man that had the great game against Carolina, 8 for 11, 16 points. Interestingly, taking Kevin Johnson out of the game, who had been one-on-one -on -one with David Rivers right. defensively. Very good point, Harry, and I'll talk about substitutions when we do have a chance. Reach in foul on Joseph Price. His first Notre Dame's 15 foul, so it will not result in shooting. See, Harry, games dictate substitutions, and what things determine substitutions are fouls, stamina, strength mismatches, and a quickness mismatch. And one of the things is, right, Johnson was guarding David Rivers, now he puts Pop Sims in, who is also very good defensively. Sims has the ball, number 12. Harry Trotter. Notre Dame's back into a man-to-man. -man. And Marquette is handling very patiently on defense. They're playing very patient. Still a lot of time. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Very trotting. There'll be a foul on Ken Barlow reaching in. Or rather on Dan Battle Royal reaching in his second. And Notre Dame's 16 foul. Again, had the right idea. How many times I've said it, you want to get on the side, get that hand out in front, and try to deflect the ball. That time, just about a half a step too late in a body foul. Reaching in foul on Joseph Price. His second. That'll result in one-on-one -on -one shooting. Well, that's, that's one that he would certainly like to have back because he didn't... He was, they were going for the five-second count, Harry, and they were about one away. Once he didn't get it, then Joseph should have backed off, but he had already committed himself, and that puts him on the line. So Marquette's Benny Moore will be shooting, averaging 10 and 4 tenths points per game. He's a 69% free throw shooter. He has six so far. And now checking in for the Marquette Warriors, number 22, Mike Davis, the 6'10 senior from Chico, California. Kerry Trotter will sit down. Moore at the line. 6'4", senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Benny Moore with seven. He leads the Warriors in scoring. He'll get one more. Moore is high game. He was here against Southwest Louisiana. They hit 10 of 11 from the field. Tying a Marquette record. He's one for two from the free throw line. Notre Dame with a ball trailing by eight. Now they're in a zone. They may be going score or no score. They came down this time, last time in a man-to-man, -man, this time in a zone, and that's what some teams would do depending on whether they score or not. I'll tell you one thing, Harry, they've done a pretty good job on David Rivers. Both of blocks rejects the shot of Barlow and a whistle and a foul is called on Barlow. I want to tell you something. You hear a lot of people talk about it, Harry, but you don't see it very often. Now watch this. There's one thing to be a shot blocker. It's another thing to be able to block a shot and get your block. Now this is really marvelous. Good camera work and look at the reaction of Tom Coca. Then he had the presence of mind to try to throw it off of Barlow. That's pretty good play right there. Now Barlow picking up the foul will be his second. 
And Kofa will come to the line. He'll be shooting one and one. After a fine defensive play by Tom. He's averaging eight and two tenths points per game. 69% free throw shooter. Help nope, rebound snared by Kempton. Marquette leading by eight. 9.50 left to play first half. John Connor in there now for Notre Dame. He's also a very good shooter, so if they stay in that zone, he's not afraid to throw it up. Scott Hicks is in there now, number 10. He's there man to man. David Rivers. Ooh, battle on the board, keeping it alive nicely. Stolen inside is Scott Hicks, and he's bothered by somebody. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you one thing, he wasn't going to get that shot away. Watch this on the replay. I'm not quite sure on whom the foul was called. David Boom. <laughs> David Boom. But watch this. Three players are going to hammer him. Watch. Boom, Culper. Not as bad as I thought because not a three of them got him with the body. I thought they all hammered him with the body and they didn't. Got hit to be shooting. Him. This is the first one. Scott's been a good free throw shooter. 84%. Harry, you know, one of the other keys was I thought it would be what Notre Dame could do defensively against Boone and Trotter. But, you know, you look at the scoring and what they've done to Barlow and Royal. Barlow has four and Royal only two, I think. So they've turned it around and done a good job on Notre Dame's forwards. 22-17, Marquette. 9-20 to play here in the first half. Any more? Sims inside, Copa the post move, won't go, rebound, scramble four, picked up by Scott Hicks after Moore had kept it alive. Rivers a great pass and go in the layup. Great assist by David Rivers. Marquette's lead is five. Gets to Notre Dame, student body up. Benny Moore passes up the shot. All the way, jumper, will not go, and Scott Hicks goes the rebound for Notre Dame. See, that was a bad shot, Harry. Bad shot. Dolan inside, yes, by Jim Dolan. Rick McGarris quickly wants to time out because the momentum is turned. Dolan too quick basket. 8.30 to play in the first half. And Notre Dame fighting back into it. Timeout has been called with a score. Mark Kepsen here at home. Very good timeout by Rick Majerus, Harry. Notre Dame got the first fast break basket by Royal, which turned the crowd on. And then I thought Mark Kepsen played out of sync for the first time and took a bad shot at the offensive end. Notre Dame came down, converted. They really have the crowd back in the game now. Kevin Johnson and Kerry Trotter back in from Marquette after the timeout, as is Walter Downing. His shot misses and counter the rebound for Notre Dame. Jim Dolan, Kempton, free for the shot. Puts it on the floor and then doesn't get free, but a foul is going to be called on Walter Downing. Downing's second, and Kempton will come to the line shooting a pair. Well, that young man is their leading shot blocker. He has 41 blocks, and one of the problems I've said before, when you're a great shot blocker, you also tend to get yourself in foul trouble because you're always willing to leave your feet. And that's what he did that time. He had Tim Kempton pinned, but he got too much body, and he fouled him. Now, Marquette has missed their last four shots, Harry, and the, the, the thing that separates the good teams from the bad, anybody can play well when you're shooting 75%. But now they're nothing for four, and now they've got to stay under control and keep working hard so that the last eight minutes, the first half doesn't get away from them. Notre Dame now down by one with 8.07 to play in the first half. It's 22-21 mark set. Kevin Johnson. Potter. Walter Downing, the inside move. No, battle on the boards. Picked up by Trotter. His shot won't go. Battle, and a foul is going to be called on Boone. David Boone picks up his third personal foul, and that could be critical for Mark Chet. Tom Cope is going to check back in for Rick Majerus. But Boone is in some foul trouble. He's their leading scorer, their leading rebounder, and he'll sit down with three fouls. 
He's 16th in the nation in rebounds, averaging 10 and 2 tenths boards per day. You know, it, it's interesting that that happened, Harry, because I said, you know, they've got to get that young man into their offense. Their pivot people have been taking all their shots. Copeland and Downing. Here's David Boone, who's averaging 15 points a game. He's only taken one shot in the first 13 minutes of the game. Now, You've got to give credit to Notre Dame defensively. I'm not taking that away from anybody. Donald Royal, Jim Dolan, the rest of them, the matchups, you do all that to keep that to put the ball in the hands of your people who are leading your team in scoring. Jim Dolan has six off the bench in Notre Dame lead. 23-22, 745 to play. First half. Trotter. Rejected stolen by David Rivers. Rivers all the way inside. He's rejected by Trotter. Three on one. Great, great defensive play by Jim Dolan. It's off hope it'll be Notre Dame ball. And Dolan was all alone with three on one. And he made a brilliant defensive play. Uh, let's take a look now. Watch Trotter come from behind. Now watch the timing. Now that's perfect. See that? Great camera work. Great. I'm glad he didn't call something on that play. And then Pop Sims just didn't play it very well at the other end, Harry, on the three-on-one. Notre Dame leading by one, 7-13 left to play first half. That's not a bad change defensively for Marquette. They want to see if they can take the crowd out a little and slow it down. Huh? Rivers from way downtown. His first points of the afternoon, and Notre Dame leads by three. 6.50 to play first half. See if they get it to Trotter because he's their second leading scorer at 14. Kevin Johnson. No three bomb. Jim Dolan. What a job he's done off the bench for Notre Dame. Rivers to Dolan. Dolan. Nope. Rebound snared by Curry Potter. Into the hands of Sims who will slow it down. Pop Sims brings it back out. Irish by three. 6.20 to play first half. An excellent first half. Harry Trotter. No rebound. Dolan. Out to Scott Hicks. Hicks all the way inside. Throws the layup. The Potter to follow. John Potter, a big bucket. And the Irish lead by five. Yes, sir. He's going to get another timeout, Harry. Jarris is going to use another timeout. 6 one left to play in the first half. Notre Dame trailing by nine. And now the timeout is controlled in Indiana. Here's Kerry Trotter's shot to miss. Jim Dolan has really been a factor off the bench, outletting to Hicks. Hicks blowing the layup, but Sean Connor right there for the defense. So many people lope when there's a uh, fast break like that, Harry, and they don't come down to get in the action in case something like that happens. Scott Hicks wouldn't miss another one of those if he shot 100 more, but Sean Connor's hustled down, and that's 14 straight points that Notre Dame has run off, and I don't think Marquette has made, I don't think, Harry, maybe about one out of their last 10, I would suspect. They led 22-14, now they trail 22-27. Benny Moore, Kevin Johnson, really a battle going on inside, Kempton and Walter Downing. Benny Moore, from way outside, Sims finally puts one through for Marquette, 27-24 in Notre Dame. Well, that's what you always hope happens after a timeout, and they just had to slow down a little bit and work and try to break down the defense, and they did a reasonably good job. Jim Dolan back out to Kempton. Notre Dame leading by three. We have 5.15 to play first half. David Rivers. Oh, Dolan the rebound. What a job Dolan's done off the bench. He has eight off the bench, and Notre Dame leads by five. 4.53 left to play. First pass. Notre Dame staying right with the man to man. No one's going to be whistled for the foul on Kerry Trotter. See, that's exactly what I thought they should have been doing a long time ago. See, you don't have to worry about much, Harry, when you're hitting the 15 and 20 foot perimeter shot. Anything short of that. You don't have to worry about your inside game. 
then the perimeter shots didn't start falling, but instead of getting the ball inside to a David Boone and to a Terry Trotter, who are both, well, Trotter's almost unstoppable inside, and he might be so much as Darrell Royal. Now they're finally going back to what's on there. You know, it's like dancing with the girl in the Kibor. Right. Terry Trotter has three. Averages 14 and 5 tenths points per day. Battle on the board. Dolan gets the rebound. Yeah, Dolan has been a major factor off the bench yeah. for Digger Phelps. Boy, he struggled early in the beginning of the year, and I remember, you know, I know Digger was going to have a meeting. I don't know what happened, but boy, he has turned into one way of a basketball player ever since. X was close to goaltending. It is goaltending. A goal 10 falls on Walter Downing and gives Dolan the basket, and Dolan now has 10 points off the bench. Yep, see it. Is it above the ring? Is it in its downward, downward flight? flight I believe Does it have a chance was. to be good? What do you think? Close. <laughs> I'd say it was close too. I don't think it was gold tender. Kevin Johnson. All batted out of bounds by Kempton. It'll be Marquette Ball. You mentioned it earlier, Harry. I hope that our camera people can keep it on Tim Kempton and Walter Downing because you'll get a real idea of how those two big guys are really going yeah, after one of them trying to fight for position the second one trying to get around in front that's great defense by Kempton they were going to try to clean up that kind of play this year the officials were before they're letting them go to it this afternoon See they takes one and David Rivers the rebound for Notre Dame Irish leading by six 351 to play first half. See, that was very smart by Sean Connors. Trotter had perfect position, and Connors went back and doubled up on him and challenged Benny Moore to take the shot. Dolan open for the shot. He has tied his season high. He has 12 points. He has 12 against American U. Dolan has been a key factor in Notre Dame's lead, which is now eight points. Hot Sims, no, rebound. Whistle, foul, going to be called out of here. I think David Rivers, if I'm not mistaken, I saw by the look on his face, he wasn't very happy. Yep. Here's on David Rivers. It will be his second. Checking in for Marquette. Number 23 is Pat Foley, a 6'7 sophomore from Birmingham, Michigan. Now, if he's a role player, Harry, very physical, very aggressive, so there's a, re a reason he's probably in that game. He's a rebounder, and he plays good defense, and the rebounding is the thing that Rick Majerus needs now. Now, Royal coming back in for Notre Dame. Tom Kopa checks back in for Marquette. Walter Downing coming out. And going to the free throw line will be Michael Sims, the 66% free throw shooter. He has two so far. Notre Dame leading by eight. Three ten to play first ten. Sims will earn the bonus. Sims has them both. Notre Dame leading by six with three minutes to play here in the first half. Scott Hicks taking over as the point guy with David Rivers sitting down for a while. Notice how quiet Barlow's been, for example, Kempton's been. But look at the bench scoring 17 to six in favor of Notre Dame. Off Marquette, it'll be Notre Dame ball. Yeah, most of that bench scoring in the person of Jim Dolan, who right. has a dozen. See, that's the, that's the great luxury when you can pull a Joseph Price off the bench or a Jim Dolan off the bench, and your leading scorers might not be having a good first half, and those guys light it up. Hits from way outside. No, on the rebound grab by Ben Moore. Notre Dame leading by six. Mark Kett with the ball. I do think Marquette has to stay within striking distance the last two minutes here, Harry. I don't think they can afford to have it go up to like 10 or 12. Kevin Johnson. 
from the corner. Johnson has seven. Notre Dame's lead is down to four. Marquette in the zone. They're gonna stop Notre, try to stop Notre Dame from pounding it inside. See if they can hold him to one shot. Get it inside to Royal, and he is really clobbered by Tom Cope, and Royal will be shooting a pair. Cope is second foul. Well, this is the one. This is one of the ones you're not going to hear much booing about because I would have to say that this may have been a foul. <laughs> Got a chance. <laughs> Amazing that Donald Royal was able to maintain oh. his footing yep. after Copa clobbered him. Royal will be shooting too. Nothing, nothing intentional about it, believe me, because I like Tom Copa an awful lot. He came up before the game, spoke to me, said hello, we chatted, but you know, there are a lot of people that feel that he's going to just call for a foul. You must as well make it a good one as long as you're not going to hurt anyone. Royal is 75% free throw shooter, has three points this afternoon, and Notre Dame leads by five. Royal puts them both in, Notre Dame. 11 out of 12 from the free throw line. They're 14th in the nation as a team as a free throw shooting team, and Notre Dame leads by six. Tom Sopa outside answers for Marquette. He has four. A four-point Notre Dame lead. How about the young man dribbling the ball? I would say he's been rather quiet, wouldn't you, Harry? Two David points Rivers, David? Just two points. Leads Notre Dame in scoring. 16.6 per game. Well, that's pretty good when your catalyst only has two, and you're still ahead 35-31. He just doubled that figure. <laughs> and it's 37-31 Irish by six. Notre Dame 10-0 here at the ACC this year. 13-3 overall. Copa, position no. Copa's going to be called for over the top on Barlow, and Copa picks up his third foul. So Copa has three. David Boone of Mark getting some foul trouble with three. Well, that's what we told you. If they got in foul trouble, that Notre Dame bench is going to go a lot deeper. Now watch. He really almost had this one. Not bad, but he had he got himself trapped too far under the basket, Harry, and he didn't have a good angle to put the ball up in the glass. The first time he went up should have been the last time. The second one, when you're climbing somebody as big as Barlow, who is 6'10", you're going to get called for coming over the back, and he did. Barlow has four points. A 91% free throw shooter is three for three from the free throw line. We'll get another one, and Notre Dame leads by seven. Notre Dame with an eight-point lead. Their biggest of the game. Marquette enjoyed an eight-point lead earlier in the half. Less than a minute to play, first half. He's got a foul inside that's called on Pat Foley of Marquette. Well, 6 7 2 10. What I mentioned to you, very aggressive. He's saying something to Kenny Barrow right now. They're both kind of smiling about it, I think. He probably just got caught in the process. It was one of those that we talked about the other night. Somebody gets in the first lift and the second guy gets caught. David Rivers now will come out. Rivers has two fouls rather than risk getting David his third foul. Oh, yeah. the minute left. Scott Hicks checks in for him. Oh, yeah. That just gives Scott Hicks that much more time as a point guard, which Jimmy wants to have him have. And Barlow has been fantastic from the free throw line this year. Came in as the eighth leading free throw shooter in the nation, 91%. He hadn't heard that. He's five for five. Oh, I think he had 11 in a row. Did he come into this game? I thought I read that. Now, Sean Perez is sitting right at the table, which leads you to believe he's coming in for, for Barlow. Yes, he is. And Barlow is six for six from the free throw line. Has eight points. And Notre Dame has a ten-point lead. Fifty-four seconds left to play. Kevin Johnson. Oh, go rebound, knocked out of bounds. Great effort by Tom Finn. It's our television table here. He's all right. Notre Dame will inbound. 
Well, that's a shot that Kevin Johnson had to take, Harry. Right, and, and there's 38 on the clock, and let's see what Notre Dame does. They'll just go for probably that last shot. They lead by 10 after trailing by 8 earlier in a half. Notre Dame will let the clock go down, take a last shot before halftime, either go up, up 12 or up 10, and at any rate, it'll be double figures. Double figures, and that's precisely where you want to keep them. And now they look at that clock, when it gets down about 8, you've got to start making some kind of a move. I've seen so many teams wait so long and get nothing out of it. They've got to move some players and get the zone to move. Nearly a steal. Kempton's going to be called for traveling. Basket will not go, and Mark Kemp will have four seconds to try to get on the board before that time. Let's see if they get the pass down court. Well, see, that's where you don't want it. That shot beat the buzzer, but it didn't go in the hole, and Notre Dame with a 10-point halftime lead. That's the end of the first half. The score, Notre Dame 41, Mark Kemp 31. Got athletic and convocation center in Notre Dame, Indiana. Harry Callis along with Jim Gibbons. Mark Kemp, Jim, had an 8-point lead, 22-14. to 14, Played well in the first 10 minutes, and then Notre Dame just exploded to lead by 10 at the half. I would say so, Harry. That's an 18-point turnaround here. Yeah. Notre Dame is leading by 10 right now. I broke the first half down into two 10-minute segments. The first 10, Marquette could not have played better. Not only offensively, but I don't think they could have played any better defensively. Then, at the 8.30 mark, when Notre Dame ran off the five straight points with the uh, the, Dolan, or the uh, Royal Williams and the Steelers, then the whole complex of the game changed in the last 10 minutes, obviously, belonged to Notre Dame. Jim Dolan off the bench leads all scores with 12 points. Coming up in just one, the key figure off the bench for the Fighting Irish. Dolan with 12 points off the bench. Ken Bilo, 8, including 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Marquette tied in scoring. Kevin Johnson, K.J. Johnson, their fine guard, along with Benny Moore. David Rivers has been fairly silent in the scoring department. It doesn't mean he isn't a factor in the game. Watch, he knows in whose hands to put it. There is the 10th. Well, I don't know how many slam dunks, but that young man, Donald Royal, has 10 three-point plays. We also saw a lot of great defense in the first half. Watch Kerry Trotter here reject David Rivers. Now, I'm not sure David Rivers knew that Kerry Trotter, all he was worried about was Johnson at this point, but now Trotter just slipped right in and watched right on top of the ball. If he would have held that a little longer, Harry, that would have been a jump ball because he would have had his hand right on top of the ball. Tom Cope also did some rejecting on Ken Barlow. Well, my favorite play of the year so far, three things. Timing number one, had the presence of mind to catch it number two, and number three tried to bounce it back off of Barlow coming back. He caught his own block, and as I said earlier, that's spectacular. Watch David Rivers with an assist here to Jim Dolan, who off the bench leads all scores with 12 points. That young man has 12 points. He is 5 of 6 from the field. He is 2 of 2 from the line and has 6 rebounds in, in not even 20 minutes of basketball because he came off of the bench. So Dolan really has faced Notre Dame to a 10-point halftime lead. 41-31 here at the Athletic and Convocation Center. I, I wasn't ignoring your question because I guess as many times as we've said it, Harry, I would say right now, the first five minutes of this half, uh, well, after five minutes, I'll let you know whether I think Marquette is going to have a chance in this basketball game because I think they've got to cut that margin in half practically by the first five minutes or so. They can't let it go up to 15 or 18. Michigan Hanley over Wisconsin. Michigan ranked ninth, 91-64 this afternoon. And LSU over Georgia by four. LSU a top 20 team. Here Notre Dame leading by 10. And we're set to start second half action. Notre Dame will start out the second half with Ken Barlow, Tim Kempton, Scott Hicks, David Rivers, and Jim Dolan. Marquette has Terry Trotter, Benny Moore, David Boone, 
Kevin Johnson and Walter Downing, the same five that started for Marquette. Well, the interesting thing for Marquette here is the two leading scorers are the guards. And the guards haven't been their leading scorers many times. They've got to get Trotter and Boone in this game to even have a chance. Trotter has three, Boone has four. They're the two leading scorers, and here's Trotter. Won't go good offensive board. Boone, no. Rebound pulled out by Barlow. Deals it off nicely to Rivers. Rivers is stopped by Kevin Johnson. Boy, they have done a good job of stopping penetration on the part of David Rivers. Johnson has really played him well. Jim Dolan. That's patience. That's good reversal. Very good reversal. Got an inside position. Doesn't get a rebound. Tipped out by Trotter to Benny Moore. Notre Dame has really played well offensively the last game and a half. Boom, the turnaround jumper. It doesn't seem to be much question that they're going to start getting the ball into the hands of Trotter and Boone. No one else has touched it the first two possessions. Boone has six points. Notre Dame's lead is eight. David Rivers this time around Kevin Johnson. Ball's blocked, though, by Benny Moore helping out Johnson. It'll be out of bounds, Notre Dame. Here's the timing again. You've got to be able to do it without getting the body. Watch. Yep, I'm not quite sure I saw what happened. I thought maybe it just had slipped out of David's hands, but obviously it could be Notre Dame's ball. It had to been hit out. Out of bounds. They went right back into the zone. Notre Dame by eight, 18 and a half minutes left to play. Watch how patient Notre Dame is. That's what David was so happy about in the Utah game, and I thought they exhibited great patience in the first 20 minutes this afternoon. David Rivers from outside. No tap, no rebound pulled down by Boone. That was Walter Downing that almost tapped that ball back in the basket. Marquette with the ball. Trailing by eight. Gary Trotter wide open as Kevin Johnson and KJ hits it. Kevin was nine and Notre Dame's lead is six. That's what they wanted. I think it's boy, as tight as it sounds the first five minutes if you can come out of that. Now, if they don't score here and Marquette scores, I will guarantee you, I'll, I'll guess the bigger Phelps will take a timeout. David Rivers, ball away jumper, no, scramble on the court, Dolan tied up, alternate possession belongs to Notre Dame. Now Rick Majerus was hoping they'd call a travel. If he had had possession of that ball and had fallen, it would have been a travel, but he went down to the floor to get it. Now people are going to say, why isn't it a three-second count? There's no three-second count if someone doesn't have possession of the ball. is open. Doesn't get it though and the rebound grabbed by Kevin Johnson. Now yeah, see if they score and see what happens because it's bigger just doesn't like what he's seeing. Notre Dame's lead was at 10 at halftime. Now it's six. Ball away jumper by Downing. Nope. Rebound grabbed by Barlow. David Rivers is two for nine from the field this afternoon. Rivers has been held in check very nicely by Kevin Johnson. 41-35 Notre Dame. A contested foul on David Rivers, and that'll be his third. See if the man has established position. See if he's squared straight up. Oh, he is. That's, there, there is no question about that call whatsoever. Good camera work, good replay. It's very easy for people to see what's happening once you can do things like that. That's nice. Al Royal coming back in for Notre Dame. That's the shot. Get it inside the big Walter Downing. A foul can be called on Jim Dolan. Dolan will pick up his second. Notre Dame's second team foul of the half. And Walter Downing is their leading field goal percentage shooter. He's the only one on the team over 52%, but that can be deceiving, Harry. You know what I'm leading up to. Those are all slam dunks, or they're all shots that are taken 
right there in that blue. He doesn't come away from that basket. I think he's got to post himself up a little closer to the basket and put that much more pressure on Tim Kirkman, who's guarding it. He has not been a good free throw shooter, 47% as we check Mark Stevenson out. It comes in for Notre Dame. Scott Hicks goes out. Uh, when I say Kempton is guarding him, they've been going against each other the whole game. Tim Kempton isn't in right now, but he has been playing against Downey for most of the half. One for two, and the rebound picked off by Donald Roy. Notre Dame's lead is five. Six two and a half minutes left to play. Deflected out of bounds by Downing. What Notre Dame is trying to do, Harry, is to move down Royal into a position to get the ball because David Boone has three fouls and they know that once he gets that ball in that close, he has Boone at his mercy. See if it happens. See how he's posting up on him inside? Barlow inside. He's fouled by Walter Downing. Downing's third. Milo will come to the line, he'll be shooting two. That's a pretty good move away from the basket by Ken Barrow. See, that proves how versatile a player he is. He's a finesse player who can go inside and outside. That time he put the ball on the floor. Some guy 6'10 can't do that. That wasn't a bad move. Milo has eight points. He's six for six from the free throw line. Perfect, seven for seven. He had a battle with whatever it is, right? Wow. Okay, that's amazing. Some people can shoot like that, and others get up there and shoot 30 or 40 percent. I told you before, it just baffles me, but it happens. Milo with ten, including a perfect eight from the free throw line. Notre Dame is backed up now by seven. 16 minutes left to play in the game. Kevin Johnson. Got it inside for the dunk for Walter Downing. That's why he's shooting 52%. <laughs> he's going to miss many of those out. No, nope. I wouldn't say so. Boone is doing a nice job with Donald Royal. He better not let him get the ball because then it's going to be too late unless he gets help. But he's fronting him. Dolan. Jim Dolan, a season high, 14 points. Notre Dame leads by seven. Donald oh, Royal, a near steal. That shot doesn't go. Rebound. Boo, nicely. Shut to the ball by Royal. Ball loose on the court. Last touch by Mark Cannon of the Notre Dame ball. We have 15 minutes and one second left to play in the game. Notre Dame led by 10 at halftime. A timeout has been called on the court. With a score, Notre Dame 45. Notre Dame won the last four meetings. Nick Majerus 0-3 against Notre Dame in his young coaching career. Marquette, Digger Phelps 8-7 and seven against Marquette. David Rivers, he's just two for nine from the field this afternoon. He has really been held in check. He has four points, five for the alley -oop, and a foul is called on Donald Royal. Good call, Harry. I, I'm sorry for doing that, for interrupting you, but I really thought that was a great call. These two officials, I think, have worked a really, really fine basketball game. Steve Eustach and Jim McLeod of the Western Athletic They Conference. have done a good job. You're so used to working with three people. Believe me, it's a different Work, difference working with two, but Royal just went right into that man, and that's a good call. Notre Dame's in a match now. They're, they're playing their, their matchup zone. 45-38, Notre Dame. See, this is how you control the tempo of a game. This is how you take a team out of its offense. They just start standing around. That's not a bad shot. Benny Moore, no, the rebound grabbed by Ken Barlow. 14-14, left to play, Notre Dame up on seven. Very 14-3. And, 
uh, extend the home winning streak to 11 and 0. Stevenson, underneath, not going to go. He's fast to travel. See, I meant to mention it earlier. A lot of teams, Harry, try to force players to go to the baseline because they feel there are a lot less options open to you as an offensive player when you go to the baseline than if you go to the middle of the floor. You go to the base and you watch teams, they automatically just drop in and completely zone. That time, Stevenson got frustrated and traveled. Marquette has Tom Copa back in. Walter Downing is out. Go. Nope. Rebound off the court by Jim Nolan. Notre Dame's seven point lead, 13.40 left to play. Ball knocked away, nearly stolen by Kerry Potter. Not much scoring here in the second half. Notre Dame scored four, Marquette seven. A little more than six and a half minutes. Rivers baseline behind the back, stolen by Betty Moore. Betty Moore behind the back, all the way inside, yes, by Betty Moore. He has nine, and Marquette now trails by five. It was a nice move, wasn't it, Harry? Very good move. Marquette being led by their guards in scoring. Moore with nine, Kevin Johnson with nine. You notice that David Rivers took the baseline and got himself trapped also. That was two, no, two turnovers in a row by going to the baseline. Dolan the fake. Jim Dolan, yes. Dolan has 16, and Notre Dame leads by seven. And what a game Dolan has played off the bench. 12-25 left to play. Dolan is matched up against Matt Van Allen switching now, see? They're just shifting men out of that matchup that Royal has Boone now. Go for the turnaround jumper, no rebound, battle Royal. Dolan, what an offensive move by Dolan. This might be the greatest game of his career. He has 18. See, that's smart on Notre Dame's part. He has the hot hand. Boy, that first entry pass went right to Dolan, and he went around Tom Copa like Copa was standing still. That's a great move. Dolan's career high 20 is a freshman against Maryland. Forty-nine, forty, Notre Dame. Eleven and a half minutes remaining to be played. Boone trying to get it into Copa. A foul called on Copa. Push it off on Copa. That'll be his fourth. The second team foul of the half on Marquette. Joseph Price coming back in for Notre Dame, as is Scott Hicks. But a timeout has been called. 11.22 left to play. A timeout has been called to score. Notre Dame 49 and Mark Kep 40. Afternoon has been number 42, Jim Dolan off the bench. Lee all scores with 18. Dolan has been 8 for 9 from the field, 2 for 2 from the free throw line, and 7 rebounds. And they get it into the hot hand. Dolan, watch the move here. I'm helping. Take a look. You got Tom Copa to do the one thing you don't want to do. You don't ever leave your feet defensively. Now, that, that's a great head and shoulder fake. Now, watch this. Watch the entry pass. They know that Dolan has the hot hand. Nice pass by Rivers. Look at each drop step. Hooked him with his left arm and just went right around him. And look at the head concentration. Had the head up in the air. Dolan, usually a reluctant shooter. He has only attempted 48 field goals in the first 16 games of the season. So that's like an average of right around three field goal attempts a game. That's what confused everybody, Harry. About the middle of last year, he quit stopping. He took himself out of the offense. And only because he can do so many other things was he even playing. Otherwise, he would have been on the bench. He's hot today. 18 to lead all scorers. And Notre Dame up by nine. See, there's Dolan. Marquette is in his own. Partially that's to keep him from pounding it into a guy like Dolan who has the hot hand. 
Milo stripped to the ball by Boone, picked up on the court by Pop Sims, and out of the hands of Kevin Johnson. 1.45 left to play. Pop Sims for the deep quarter. No, rebound. Donald Royal. One shot game for Marquette at that end, Harry. When they missed, that's all. Three Notre Dame players went to that board to grab that rebound. That's great. Notre Dame's rebounding has been excellent this year. Third in the nation in rebound margins. Scott hits the inside move. Rebound snared by Trotter into the hands of Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson rejected by Joseph Price to Barlow. Johnson got caught in the air and nowhere to go. Don't ever leave your feet. You know what doesn't bode well for Marquette is they have had three or four chances to come down and cut that lead from nine to seven or five, and they haven't done anything now. If Notre Dame gets the hot hand, then you get it up to 13 or 14, and then you're in big trouble. Notre Dame led by 10 at the half, they lead by nine now, with 9.42 left to play. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, 16 seconds. I love the patience Notre Dame has used offensively the last three or four games. Scott Hicks missed the inside move. Boom, the rebound for Marquette. Notre Dame has really been playing with fire the last two or three minutes because Marquette just really has a bit of play. Barry Trotter way off the mark and Notre Dame with a rebound. man-to-man defense. Foul Royal. Foul on Walter Downing. That'll be his fourth. The third team foul on Marquette. It's really been a low-scoring half. Notre Dame has eight points in 11 minutes in this half. And Marquette has nine. Mr. and Mrs. Jim Dolan. From Pennsylvania. New Jersey Rebels. Proud parents this afternoon. Their son Jim has 18. Well, they make one trip a year. I suspect they came at the right time because they can catch this one and catch the Maryland game again on Monday and maybe follow from there to Dayton. From Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Battle Royal. Notre Dame continuing to shoot brilliantly from the free throw line. They are now 18 for 19 from the free throw line. Well, it's not bad when you can have Rivers and Barlow. Not that they're having a bad game. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. When they're playing the way they are, not their two leading scorers, not leading in the scoring. But still, your team is able to carry on like this and have an 11-point lead. That, that bodes well for the future. There's a lot about the bench for Digger Phelps. Benny Moore checking back in for Marquette. Notre Dame now leading by 11. Doesn't hurt when you're 19 to 20 at the free throw line either. Notre Dame came in 14th in the nation as a team in free throw percentage. 11 point Notre Dame lead. Downing has position. The basket's going to go and he's fouled inside. So Downing has seven points. Let's take a look now. Rick Majerus was saying to them, do me a favor and dribble and penetrate. They didn't. But there was an attempt by who was that? Sean Connor, right? Yep. He just didn't get in the right position defensively. Got him with the body, and down and did the right thing. He went to the board. See what Majerus is yelling about, Harry, is that so many teams stand around and do nothing but pass the ball around the perimeter against zones, and he wants them to dribble and penetrate to get Notre Dame to move. Downing completes a three-point play. Walter has eight. Notre Dame's lead is a pressure put on by Marquette. He's going to extend the defense. He's calling it back off now. That's just a nuisance defense, but he wanted to get it higher than that to begin with. David Rivers. Top Sims on him. Inside. Royal. And Royal is fouled. He got inside position. I'll tell you, one of the things that Notre Dame's inside people, boy, they post up so well. And if they aren't in a position to get the ball, Harry, they just keep moving. Dolan will move out. Uh, uh, Royal will move out. Dolan will come in. Then Joseph Price will go in. They just keep rotating. And they make it really tough on you defensively, especially if you're not switching. If you're playing a man-to-man, -man, then it's extremely tough. 
Donald Royal with three points. He's five for five from the free throw line. Notre Dame 20 of 21 from the free throw line. You notice the Notre Dame student body. <laughs> they have been standing the whole game. Look at it. Yeah. The whole game. Yeah. Notre Dame leading by 10. Six for six from the line for Royal. He has eight points. Notre Dame had a 10-point lead at halftime. We have 8.20 left to play. Inside position for Poon. And Poon is the leading scorer for Marquette. Has keep the sack. He averages better than 14 a game. And I'll tell you, from what I've seen of him, I like him. He, he is tough in all those sports. Good position. Yes. Old Rivers to the court. To the also in the hole. David does his magic. He has six points, and that's the memorable basket. See, you can fall to the floor with the ball, Harry, if you continue to dribble it. He's so sharp. He knew down well it was going to be a turnover unless he continued his dribble. 55-45 Notre Dame, 7.34 left to play. Pivot move by Downing. Walter Downing has 10. Notre Dame leads by I'll tell you what, if you play for Marquette and you play Marquette, it'll be 7 minutes and 20 more seconds. They'll fight you right down to the wire. So Notre Dame better stay right at the intensity level they are right now. Battle Royal. Right around Downing, his basket won't go, and there's that inside position that David Boone always gets. He's a not, not a great leaper, but he really gets it. Benny Moore, no, rebound, Battle Royal. David Rivers. Side off the hand of Connor, it'll be Mark that ball. Royal appears to be a little tired to me, and I'll be anxious. I don't know for whom Barlow came in, but Battle Royal, that's that time out came at a good time. 6.51 left to play in the game. A timeout has been called with a score. Notre Dame 55 and Mark Kep 47. This is where we load the ace back. Captain. Joseph Price baseline. He's going to be called for the offensive foul. His third. Team foul number six, and the next foul on Notre Dame results in one-on-one -on -one shooting for Marquette. See, that's three of those that have happened since we talked about that earlier, Harry. Now, look at the defense. See what I was talking about? Four Marquette players surrounded Joseph Price, so you have not many options. Plus, Harry, you have your back to the floor, which makes it worse. Scott hits back in for Notre Dame. Joseph Price is out. Well, this is a big possession, a big possession. I'm anxious to see if they just take their time. Walter Downing is fouled by Barlow, so Downing will go to the line again. Barlow's third foul. Downing will be shooting two. He has 13. He leads Marquette in scoring. Real pops. And real pleased with what he sees the second half. His team led by 10 at halftime. Downing could cut that to three. Downing season high, 14 against Southwest Louisiana. He doesn't match it there, he'll get another one. Downing's career high, 26, while he was at DePaul against Pan American. His high at Marquette, 19. Misses them both. Captain though, knocks the rebound out of bounds. It'll be Marquette ball under their own basket. Kevin Johnson is going to check in for Marquette. Pop Sims coming out. 5-11 left to play. There's Kevin Johnson tried to feed inside. Kempton tries to save it, but it'll go into the hands of Benny Moore. That's a good move on Kempton's part. Benny Moore, yes, and Notre Dame's lead is down to three. Benny Moore with the 11. 4.53 left to play. Edgar Phelps wants a Ty Lau with 4.49 left to play. Ty Lau's been called to score. Notre Dame 55 and Marquette 52. Game, there was down by three. After trailing by 10 at halftime.
by Notre Dame scored just 14 points, a little more than 15 minutes of the second half. And David Phelps calling a timeout has not been pleased with he was seen here in the second half. Notre Dame has shot excellently from the free throw line. It's kept them ahead, but in this half, they're averaging less than a point a minute. Well, I can tell you one thing. If this game goes down to the last few seconds, and Notre Dame has to follow it. We, anyone in the world that's watching this game knows whom they're going to follow. It's going to be Walter Downing. Walter Downing, who leads Marquette in scoring with 13. He does have four personal fouls, though. And the Scott Hicks. Notre Dame by three. They're getting in the hands of David Rivers. Let's see if Digger changes the offense now. He can tell it a different kind of a set. And Barlow, nope. Rebound off the hand of Boone. Scramble for it. Barlow tied up ball. All in the possession belongs to Mark Pep. 429 left to play. The Warriors can cut it to one. Fifty-five, fifty-two, Notre Dame. See, this, this time of the game here, you worry about the arrow, you worry about the people who are in foul trouble. Inside, Boone, he's rejected by Royal. The ball's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Mark Kemp. Good defensive play by Donald Royal. Notre Dame ball. <laughs> Boone with eight points. Five below his average. He's just close to 15 again. Jim Dolan leads all scores. Number 42 for Notre Dame. He has 18. Well, they have really done a good job defensively, Harry. Pop Sims and, and Johnson on, on David Rivers. Those are the two quickest people I've seen play him this year. They're really looking for Dolan, but their inside people, Trotter and Boone, are really, and Downing, really playing pretty well. There's the trap. Ball knocked out of bounds by Kevin Johnson. It'll be Notre Dame ball with 15 on the shot clock. 3.33 left to be played. See, that was pretty smart on Marquette's part because Royal was just going to swing and go to the basket and they just came in and trapped him. Nolan is stripped to the ball by Kevin Johnson. KJ with Penny Moore. Shot to the top, yes, by Moore. And Notre Dame's lead is down to one. Penny Moore with 13. Nothing different from any of these games, Harry. I've watched a lot of them and they all are played this well. Last year at Marquette, Notre Dame won on a one-point game on a shot by Rivers at the clock. Scott Hicks, Nolan, Barlow inside position, there's the whistle. Matter of fact, in the last 17 games, the average scoring margin difference is 0.4 points, 0.4 points. In the last 17 games, Marquette 67.9 points, Notre Dame 67. Well, doesn't surprise me, I thought it was that close. That was a foul on Trotter, Harry. His fourth, Barlow will cover the line. Like. And Jack Nicholas put a one-inch putt money away. He has been shooting eight for eight from the free throw line and 91 percent free throw shooting. I guess that jinxed him. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> eight of nine from the line. We got one more. It's only the second Notre Dame miss from the free throw line. Hey, tell you one thing, Paul, I'm sure you'll get a letter. Oh, yeah, no question. He's got one out of two. He's nine for ten. That's his average. A 91% free throw shooter. The Irish lead by two. Now, Marquette has three people in foul trouble, Harry. Trotter, Downing, and Copa. I'd burn time off the clock. If I were Marquette, I'd take a little time off that clock. I'd try to keep Trotter and Downing in that game. Hope is on the bench, so they can still bring him in. But time is valuable right now. They, they need this shot, but they've got time. 36 left on the clock. Notre Dame leading by two. It's kicked out. Notre Dame has not scored many points this half, and they've only hit on four field goals in the second half. Three of them by Jim Dolan. That's interesting, because they've also got eight turnovers in this half, so that doesn't go well either. Marquette only three. He got hit in the eye. 
the pit in the eye, no call. Called her down and got hit by apparently Tim Kempton. There was no call. No foul was called. Downing is an obvious pain. Tim Kempton just reached around when the entry pass came in, and that's one of those things that I've seen it happen before. Notre Dame leading by two, 2.47 left to play. Checking out Walter Downing. Senator David Lee. Nate Elliott was not there. See, I'm right there. Did you see the slap? Oh, no, okay. All right. I'm see. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, well, I, I think, think I think that had already Kempton had hit him first. So? Yeah. Okay. And Dolan had just come in at Tim Kempton was okay. the one that hit Downing. I see. Yeah, Dolan came over when Downing started to right. bend over and right. Now, they'll have to take Downing out of the game or be charged with a foul, Harry, and I'm sure they are, because Tom Copa has reported. Telecast is authorized on a broadcasting rights granted by TEN Sports and is intended solely for the entertainment of its audience. Any broadcast, retransmission, or publication without the express written set of TEN Sports is prohibited. Our thanks to Betsy Van Sickle, Hank Raymond, and Rick Pajaris of Mark Kep, Digger Phelps, Gene Corrigan, Roger Valdeseri, John Eisler, and Eddie White of Notre Dame. Very helpful with our telecast this afternoon. The Irish by two. We have 2.47 left to play. Third inside the Cobra. No for the turnaround jumper. Will not go. And the rebound pulled out by Scott Hicks, but he's fouled. Scott Hicks, the big defensive rebound. And he's fouled by Kevin Jodgers. Well, I just don't think that's, I hate to be critical, but I just don't think that's a good shot. Tom Copa just came in off the bench. You've got other people that you can pound the ball inside to. And he turned around and was kind of off balance because Tim Kempton bodied him from, from below and knocked him off balance. And he just didn't even get a good shot at the basket. Now they took him out so they can get more defense in. Waller Downing back in and plays to Copa. 16 foul on Marquette. David Rivers. David Rivers, that's a big pass, but he has eight. And Notre Dame leads by four with 2.17 left to play. Notre Dame has three timeouts to make. One. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson has 11. Mark Kapp within two with less than two minutes remaining to be played. Notre Dame leading by two. Rivers with Kevin Johnson out of him. Rivers around and loses the handle. It's picked up by Boone and Mark Kapp can tie here with a minute 43 left to play. Gary Trotter. Harry Trotter free for the shot. This game is tied. Trotter has just five points, but that was a big one. We're tied at 58. That's, that's senior leadership right there. A lot of people would have passed up that shot, Harry, but he did not hesitate. He was set, he took dead aim, and he let it go. Follow back out to Kempton, who passes up the shot. David, or rather, Scott Hicks. They might count it inside and get some of those people that have got four fouls, like Downing, right there. Hampton, partially rejected. Tapped by Paolo, no, and Downing owns the rebound, and Marquette can take the lead. We have less than a minute to play, and Rick Majerus is going to use his last timeout. He's going to use his final timeout, surprisingly, at 52. Timeout has been called with the score. Notre Dame 58, Mark Kemp 58. Yet a Notre Dame usually go down to the wire. This is no exception. The Athletic and Complication Center, it's sold out. We're tied at 58. 52 seconds left to play. Mark Kemp has one timeout remaining. 
They did not use their last time out there. They still look at Jerry still has one timeout remaining. Digger Phelps has three, important for Digger. And Mark Kevin on the basketball and a tie game. See, this is the tough kind of a timeout, Harry, because notice from Notre Dame's standpoint, they have to worry about if Marquette scores, are we going to call a timeout or are we going to go ahead and not call a timeout and play against their defense and not give them a chance to set up defensively? Nine of 58 with less than 15 seconds to play. Gary Plotter. Kevin Johnson. Season high, 15. Digger will call timeout with 20 seconds left to play in regulation. Walter Downing, the season high, 15 points has put Marquette up by two. Digger fell settling with assistance. Gary Prokop. Rick McGarris also, the executive producer of the and sports is Fred Bodwinick. The producer of today's telecast, Jim Silman, director Billy McCoy, associate director John Calabrese, associate producer Rose Anderson, broadcast associates Mark Packer and Barry Wallach, engineer and charge Jack Schultz, technical director Mark Lawson, audio jam Steve, electronic graphics Mike Sheehan, senior video tape editor Mike Nathanson. It's 60 to 58, Marquette, 20 seconds left to play. Yeah, this is, where, this is where you earn your money as a coach, Harry. I think they've got to take a good shot whenever they can get it, but I think you have to work for that shot. You just can't stand around. Secondly, I think you can put the ball in the hands of somebody like Rivers because he loves the pressure, he can penetrate, he can create action, and he can hit that open man. The big thing Notre Dame's big men have to do is if he starts to penetrate, they cannot stand still. They have to be able to move around. Now, an interesting thing will be when Notre Dame comes out to set up. Marquette could call a timeout. Notre Dame could look at Marquette's defense. I'm anxious to see whether Rick Majerus will stay in that man-to-man -man or whether he's going to go into a, a, a zone defense when Notre Dame comes out. 20 seconds left. Marquette trailed by 10 at halftime, leading by two here with 20 seconds remaining. See, now the other thing for Marquette is if Notre Dame scores to tie it, then if they've got enough time, They'll probably just go right ahead against Notre Dame because some coaches don't like to call a timeout, Harry, because it gives the defensive team a time to set up whatever defense they want. They'd rather go against a scrambling defense and not give the other coach well, the Digger, advantage. Digger could, could call a timeout if he scored, too. He could. He could make it. Exactly, he could. They have it in the hands of Rivers. Oh, a bad pass right into the hands of a surprise David Boone and Ken Barlow fouls him. See if they call it. 11 oh. seconds left to play. It's going to be a one and one. one, and one. That's interesting. Here's the pass right to David Boone. See? Royal for Donald Royal was heading toward the basket. You're right. Good call, Harry. He was just heading inside. They were going to uh, rotate, and he was heading inside, and David didn't see him. Now well, I figure he's going to try to ice the shooter. Bigger calls time. He has times remaining. 60-58 mark cap. The shooter will be David Boone, who has eight points. He's a 75% free throw shooter. David Boone, 6'6", junior from San Francisco, California. Uh, last year at transferring from St. Mary's College in California. Monday night, TEM Sports returns to Notre Dame campus as the Fighting Irish take out Lefty Drizel's Terrapins from the University of Maryland. Game time, 7.30. Check the local listings in your area. Then I'll be on hand for Notre Dame and Maryland. Notre Dame's... I'm the
undefeated streak at home and great jeopardy here this afternoon. Now, the critical thing right here, obviously, for Marquette Harry is whether or not David Boone makes the first free throw. If he does, I wouldn't be surprised if Rick Majerus pulled his inside people off of the free throw lane because the last thing he would want then is for a miss on the second free throw and then have somebody climb it back, have them foul and stop the clock so that Notre Dame can come down to the other end and put points on the board with the score, uh, you know, with the clock stop. And if they make them, then they can get into their full court press. David Boone. As David Phelps. Here's Boone, the man of the hour for Rick Majerus. Shooting one and one with 11 seconds left and Mark kept leading by two. I do want to say something else and I hope you'll agree with me. The officials get enough criticism during the course of the year. I think these two people have done a superb job. He missed it. Notre Dame's got a shot to tie with eight. David Rivers. John Connor won't go. Barlow the rebound. No. Tap going. Yes. This game is going to go into overtime. The basket goes by Jimmy Nolan. A career high 20. He is tied, and that might be the most important basket of his career. Great work on the offensive boards, and we are going OT. Now, Harry, I want to make a comment on this. Watch now, he gets the ball into Connor's hands and they've got to get the ball up on the glass. But watch now, watch the time down in the corner. Marquette's players just froze. Now watch, nobody is doing a single thing. See, look at, look at every Marquette player standing absolutely flat-footed. And that happens so many times. Well, you can see by the clock that Dolan had one second to get it off and did. We'll be right back with the overtime after these words. The clock and watch what uh, Sean Connor is a fine perimeter shooter. He did what he should have done. Another pass would have taken too long. But now watch the four Marquette players. Watch. They did not even move to the basket, nor did they jump off of their feet. From a coaching standpoint, obviously, Harry, that's the last thing you want to have happen. I can't fault the kids, but I'd rather in a situation like that somebody fouls and puts somebody at the line just as they did with David Boone rather than having somebody stand there and get a lay-in. Jim Dolan has matched his career high 20 points. He got that against Maryland as a freshman and Notre Dame has the ball. Now each team continues to go the same way because it's the extension of the second half and each team gets an additional timeout. Five minute overtime, Dolan, Dolan with 22, that's a career high, what a game, including the game time basket with one second left. Harry Trotter, yes, wow, Harry Trotter, he answers, Trotter was seven, I'd say he worked for that one. 62-62. David Rivers gets the screen, can't use it, Dolan nearly loses it, does lose it, picked up by Connor to Royal, Donald Royal lays it in. Royal with 10, Notre Dame leading by two in overtime. Dolan by Barlow to David Rivers to Dolan. Dolan walks, he walks. Dolan made probably the only mistake he's made this afternoon. It looked like he was deciding whether to lay it up or dunk it and got caught in the middle. I'm going to tell you something, Harry. Marquette's players are really tired. I'm watching every one of them. Some of them didn't even move that time when the ball changed hands. They've got to start burning some time down off that clock because I think they are really physically worn out. Walter Downing, what a game he has had. He has 17 and we are tied again. 3.34 to play in overtime. Follow. John Connor, they look into Dolan. That's a good patience. Donald Royal, fouled. He's fouled by Pooh. 
David Boone gets his fourth foul. Let's see, I told you, once he gets the ball in position inside, watch, see, that's a hook right there. He just hooked Boone right now. See, the, see that? They stuck the leg out. He was surrounded again by three people, and that's what happens. They're dropping off as soon as the ball goes into the uh, post. Now Royal has 10 points. He is a perfect 7 for 7 for the free throw line. He has 11. Notre Dame leads by one with 3.13 to play in OT. Don't you like this a lot better than somebody getting the opening tip and holding it for four and a half minutes oh, in a, in the, under the old rules? Battle Royal, eight for eight for the free throw line. He has 12, and Notre Dame leads by two with three minutes left to play in overtime. Notre Dame is matching, and it's tough to play it sometimes against that matchup. Boy, Downing really wants to take the shots, and he has taken them. He has matched his Marquette career high of 19 points, and we're tied again. Boy, an awful lot of confidence for a guy with four fouls. Connor stripped to the ball, fast break, Marquette, Benny Moore. Yes, and Marquette leads by two. Moore with 15. 2.28 to play in overtime. Most coaches tell you you win with that defense, and they do have that great quickness and the great hands. Barlow free for the shot. It will not go. Donald Royal the rebound, and he is fouled inside by Boone. I believe Boone. If it is Boone, that's it for him. He is... He's out. Boone's Watch. fouled out. Watch the spring and down a row. Look at, look at the position he gets. Boy, that is really good leaping ability for Donald Royal. Boone leaves the game with eight points to his credit, having fouled out, and Donald Royal will come to the line. Royal with 12 points, including eight for eight from the free throw line. Tom Copa will come in. Copa also has four fouls. Gary Trotter has four fouls. Walter Downing has four fouls. Ken Barlow has four fouls for Notre Dame. Marquette leading by two in overtime. 2-12 left to play. Royal was in crucial free throws. It's going to be interesting to see how Marquette plays now, though, because they've got the two big guys in the game, Downing at 6-9, and they've got Coco at 6-10. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Ken Barlow, the offensive rebound, lays it back in. That's only the second field goal of the game for Barlow. Well, what a big one, it ties it. Barlow at 13, we're tied at 68 in overtime. Here's Kerry Trotter. No, oh, and the rebound snared by Donald Royal, who's done a yeoman job on the board for Notre Dame. It's exactly what he does. He does the job inside, and he rebounds. Kerry Crowder forced that shot, Harry, and he forced the first one in the overtime that went in. I never thought it was going to go in. Here's Royal working on Copa. David Rivers will not go. Scott Hicks loses the ball to Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson right around David Rivers. No, the rebound passed out by Barlow, but a foul called on Barlow over the top. And Barlow has fouled out. Wasn't quite sure that he was going to take it all the way, Harry, but I guess it was as good a chance as any because he knows that Rivers is in foul trouble also. You saw it right over the top right there on the part of Kenny Barlow. You know, the one thing we've said, if you can't get control of the ball, try to get your hand on it and keep it alive, and that's what Barlow was trying to do that time, but he made the body contact at the same, in the same process. Barlow leaves the game with 13 points to his credit. We have a minute 25 to play at overtime, and Copa will come to the line. Copa was shooting one-on-one, 69% one, free throw shooter. Ray Digger is talking to Gary Brokaw and Jim Barron. They had a meeting. The referee will come over and say put 30 seconds on the clock, but Digger wanted to make sure that his coaching staff was in agreement and what player could come off of that bench and go into the game right now. Barlow is out, Tim Kempton is in, Copa comes to line. I would say these teams match up pretty well right now with, with 
Dolan and Hampton uh, in the game for Notre Dame and Coca and Downing in the game for Marquette. Does not go, and there's Donald Royals jumping out of the building to pull down the rebound. Royals been awesome on the boards in the overtime. They're tied at 68. David Rivers, captain. Captain inside. Foul called on Terry Trotter, and that will be it for Trotter. Trotter has fouled out. Trotter thought it was a charge. Let's take a look at it. Well, they grabbed him because he was just about to get a technical foul. Now, let's see. Boy, that is a very, very, and I'm not backing off, that is very difficult because, see, you have to be squared up. And from the angle we just looked at, I thought he slipped in on the side, Harry, and that he wasn't squared up. I'd have to see it again, but I, I sympathize with the official because that's a tough call. Rotter is tied out with seven points to the center. Let's see. Let's see if he has established defensive position. Let's it see. must be established. Well, I'm <laughs> if he did, I'm, I'm not very short life establishment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not any more certain on the second time, so don't show it again because I'm not going to be <laughs> any sure on the next one. I do think it was a good call. Let's put it that way. Tim Kempton, 72, has got free throw shooter, puts Notre Dame up by one in overtime with 107 to play. Kempton has just three points, all of them from the free throw line. You know, the bottom line on this game, Harry, and we've said it so many times about turnovers and free throws, Marquette has missed at that free throw line in the last two or three minutes of regulation and two or three times now, and that's what's going to cost them eventually. Hope is stripped of the ball by Scott Hicks, got a big deal for Hicks. Notre Dame with a one-point lead and the ball. Notre Dame spread it out. They'll use the clock. 33 on the shot clock, 50 on the game clock. See, that's a pass there by Kempton. David should never have brought his man over to Kempton. Don't ever bring a man over to the guy with the ball because then they can trap you. Kempton nearly loses it, gets it back out to Dolan, now David Rivers. David Rivers in the lane. He's fouled by Benny Moore, I believe. Well, I think he might have got it on Kevin Johnson, did he? Nope. Oh, no, he, he called it on Copa. Yep. He called it on Copa. That's it for Copa. He's fouled out as well. Well, Copa will lead with four points to his credit. Trotter fouled out with seven. David Boone with eight. And David Rivers will come to the line. Todd Sims will check back in for Marquette. Notre Dame led by ten at the half. The reason I was curious, Harry, is I thought when Rivers first started his drive that he got fouled from behind, but that would have been a one-and-one -one foul. When he then went into a shooting motion, I think that's what they call when he's going to have two throws. I think. Tony Reeder is the man that comes in for Copa, 6'7", sophomore from Bellwood, Illinois. Notre Dame tied this game in regulation on a Jim Dolan basket with one second left in regulation. Dolan has a career high 22, and now Rick McGarris is going to call timeout. They'll try to ice David Rivers with 31 seconds left to play in overtime. Notre Dame leads by one. Timeout has been called. Score in overtime. Notre Dame 69, Marquette 68. Right by Scotty. Watch right on top of the ball. No foul there. He just came around. Tom Copa, instead of bringing the ball into his body a little more, held it out there. But how many times have we haven't seen Scott Hicks do that a lot in particular, but boy, on rebounds after missed free throws, Harry. He is such a great leaper with a fine vertical leap. That, time, that didn't come into play that time, but he's got the quickness to be able to make that kind of a play. David Rivers will come to the line for Notre Dame. He'll be shooting two with 31 seconds left to play in overtime. It's ironic that Tom, poor Tom Coker has had so many things happen to him today after the Minnesota game when he played so well. He's from Minnesota. He then said the only other team he prepared to beat more of is Notre Dame. <laughs> 
Rivers is a 79% free throw shooter, and that was way off the mark. That's in Marquette's favor, believe me, because now it doesn't become an uneven game. If he had made one and one, then they're down by three. Now Marquette, even if he makes this, still has a chance to come down and score or a three-point play. He's got one out of two, Rivers with nine. Notre Dame leads by two, 28 and county. Marquette with the ball. Now, Tim Kempton's guarding the middle. They aren't playing man-to-man. -man. They're playing with the others playing tough man-to-man, -to -man, but Kempton's just goaltending. See him right in the middle? Top spins, won't go, Kempton the rebound. Kempton is fouled, and he'll be shooting a one-and-one. Well, a miss by Sims and Rick McGarrett. McGarrett, rather, is frustrated here at the Athletic and Convocation Center, a game that looked like he had it locked up in regulation. Only oh, to see Boone miss a one-and-one, and Notre Dame to tie it with one second left in regulation. Garrett has not beaten Notre Dame in his three years of hard cut. Not up close. <laughs> not to knock anyone, Harry, but I don't know how you can have a guy shooting 35% in that kind of a situation wind up taking that shot for you. Timeout call by Marquette with six seconds showing in the overtime. Notre Dame leading by two. A timeout has been called and the scores. Notre Dame 70 and Marquette 68. And Notre Dame leading by two with six ticks on the clock remaining. And Jim Kempton will be in the line. He'll be shooting one and one. Notre Dame 10-0 here at the Athletic and Convocation Center. Captain has three points all up from the free throw line. Roll off the rim and Captain knows he got away with one. He got, he got away with one. Incredibly, that ball went through. Notre Dame by three. Always makes the second one a lot easier. I'll tell you that. Notre Dame by four. In overtime, Kevin Johnson all the way inside lays it in, but the game is over. Notre Dame winning by two in overtime. So the final score once again in overtime, Notre Dame 72, Mark.